Okay, Hunka Kahapi. It should be in one of your handouts. Hunka Kahapi or Ochashtron. Making a relative was originally between two tribes to create peace. Okay. And it started as a ceremony uh, when some young warriors went and stole some corn that was used for ceremony. I think it was Pawnee, Pawnee tribe that, and then the tribe want those corns back or else. And so the tribe was trying to look for those corns and finally found them and also the two young warriors who, who stole this corn. And so they went and talked among themselves and also with that other tribe that the corn was stolen from. And then they agree rather than <coughs> going to war, the tribe went and do a ceremony which called Hunka Kahapi, relative, or adopt. And so it's about a four or five hour deal because there's a lot of things that are going into. And so while they, it takes them about uh, four, three, four months to uh, talk about it and how they would approach this Hunka ceremony. And so one summer they did the Hunka. It has, there's a lot of things involved in it and a lot of singing involved in that uh, Hunka, Hunkayapi. And usually they place a tipi and at that time, the chief of the tribe would sit in there, and the tribe that come to make peace would, you know, come, and they stop four times, then they enter, and then they have that ceremony inside. It, it's, uh, it had a lot of things to do with it, the pipe, the horse hair, and gourds, and other uh, smudging, and let's, uh, there's an altar that was uh, used in that ceremony, and, and they had to place a lot of stuff in that in that altar. And and that's one of the uh, hunka ceremony that was uh, as a ritual for the Lakota people. And as it get, gets, <coughs> as it goes into the, their own tribe, they come up with other system of, of adopting, like wal If there's a death in a person, uh, the family, you know, the, it's hard for them to continue on without that loved one, and it always lives a void in the lives of the Teoshpa when one of them is gone. And so, sometimes they adopt one in place of the deceased offspring or because of close resemblance, you know, and talks like him or walks like that person, and they talk with the family on both sides and they come with a consensus and they, next following spring they will do the hunka adoption or chinchaya kahapi have or adopt as a kin you know sometimes they adopt that person as a relative of the teoshpaya or for individual to replace the one that is uh, gone into the spirit world. And that's when the adoption came into uh, in lives of that family. And so they 
come up with things that would fill the void of that person that uh, have left. And uh, it works, you know, sometimes it works for that family, so they don't have to suffer or mourn or for a long time. Because, you know, if one person is that way, it's really hard for the Tioshpa to function as, as a whole, you know. And so, yeah, and so that's why they do that. Even today I could adopt Makola here as a grandpa, you know. I lost a grandpa a long time ago, so. And so these are the things that are for a reason. It's the continuation of the, uh, the tribe or the Teoshpai uh, in a good way. Because, you know, uh, sometime when something happened, bad happened in that Teoshpai, uh, their government or their, their way of life is sort of uh, uh, disturbed, you know, and, and it is hard to continue. <coughs> because a Teoshpa is a, uh, in order for one to join the Teoshpa, is the family or the bloodline. We chowe, the bloodline. If there's four or five brothers, that Teoshpa will be big because through marriage, you can also join the Teoshpa. And by adoption, a person could join that Teoshpa. And so it's real big as they do that. The Teoshpa will be bigger. And sometimes they split because of, you know, a long time ago they have around 16 century or 1600s, you know, when the horses were introduced, they have to have a lot of grazing land in order for a Teoshpa to survive because they acquire a lot of horses uh, a long time ago. So they continually move, you know, uh, to feed the horses that they have probably two, three, four hundred a Teoshpaya. And so sometimes because of that and sanitation they move, you know. Um, they split up and uh, go into different areas. But these <coughs> ceremonies are important to them. When while Iya Chi or Chinjaya Kahapi, there are some things that they do, and one thing is that they give them feathers, a plume, a brown eagle or golden uh, eagle, the plume for the female. It signifies that it, he or she is now belong to that family, or also uh, writes a passage for that female. And they usually place the plume on the right hand side of the head for female. That's where the heart is. They always say the heart is on the left. Yeah, so we, we do have plumes for the younger ones and a female when they mature they would give them uh, a new casa, bald eagle feather. <coughs> and so those are the things that symbolize the hunka, hunka kahapi, making a relative and also making peace between two tribes and they have to do the, um, do the ritual or ceremony um, because it bonds them together and they talk about that for a while, these two uh, tribes, you know, how they, uh, and then they pledge and then uh, the, the tribe come together and uh, strengthen that, you know, they formalize what they're going to do and they become a part of 
that tribe. Okay. And at Tioshpae, like I said, in order for one to belong to a Tioshpae, it usually start with a bloodline, brothers, and then marriage, and then adoption. And that's how what makes up a Tioshpae. And <coughs> a lot of these ceremonies are a vision of of an uh, individual. They were given a vision. It might take a while or longer, but yet the vision was given to them. And I think in Black Elk, he has the names of person who have a vision of all the ceremonies, you know. And it's nice to know who are the Kabbalaya. He had a vision of the Sundance, okay. And so, <coughs> In your reading, you should be able to know who has the vision as a as a a way of uh, continuing that life. If nothing else would help, you know that's why we have a lot of ceremonies that uh, we use as Lakota people. Okay, we want Wachipi looking at, at the sun and dance requires a pledge and one year of preparation. If you pledge to do that, then you prepare for one year. And I think that would be the biggest thing that a person uh, for 13 months of, you know, changing your lifestyle and your thoughts and you have to do ceremonies in order to uh, do a sun dance, and you have to prepare for whatever it is that you're pledging for, right? just for your, yourself or for somebody else, that um, you would dance for, maybe a sickness or a thanksgiving, uh, that you pledge yourself for that, for that day, you know. Ceremony begins within seven days, you know. And that's where you begin to uh, purification day or that's the time of really come to yourself as an individual. And it takes that long, you know. And before the actual dance began, you can say, I don't want to do that. You know, I, I, so, that's a, that many days where you can change your mind, you know. If you can't really do it for some reason, and then somebody could also uh, dance for you, <coughs> for you during that, those four days, or how many days you want to uh, dance at the sun dance. And it is, it is done for the good health and welfare of the nation. And for uh, plenty, they always, you know, sometimes we we'll go into a drought or uh, dry season, and somebody would pray that they would have rain so that, you know, the continuation of growth of the plant nation or the fruits, and then they give thanks because it's. Part of the real part of the Sundance is, you know, um, for generation, future generation, uh, their families continue to grow, and also uh, within the Tioshpaya, and also to the Unchimakha. Give thanks to Unchimakha so that you know uh, she will continue to nurture us as individual. You know, and so one of that Sundance is that, to give thanks and growth, plenty, and multiply, they said. Hmm. Here it is. It is that way. Sometimes when you pledge, you know, things will pop up all of a sudden. 
you know, uh, after you prepare for that sun dance, your mind will be clear because you will be doing ceremonies, you will be doing other stuff, and your focus will be on that sun dance, so your mind will be clear, and all of a sudden you'll see or hear things that are, uh, uh, as you said, uh, bad. They were there, but at that time were involved in those, you know. We know that we look around, and we look around so much that, you know, we, we don't understand it until we're focused on that ceremony, or that uh, we want what she be, and that's when we see or encounter a lot of these uh, negative things. But that's there in order for one to really um, wanted to do this, to give thanks or, you know, for his individual, or to the nation as a whole, or as, uh, in the Teoshpaya, and to multiply in good fruits, good living, uh, and healthy way. And so, <coughs> that's part of uh, pledging. Yeah. Sometimes some pledge for one year, two years, three years, or four years. It's it's how you uh, wanted to present yourself uh, to Tonkashila, and that's in the center, the tree that's there. That you know, sometimes they it takes two virgins and a chief, a medicine man, to visit that tree before the sun dance began and come coo on that on that tree, and the cotton, especially cottonwood tree, because you know it's out there in the elements, it's out there within its own uh, nation, the tree nation, and sometimes we don't understand or sometimes we, we approach it, everyone approaches that tree in a different thought pattern, okay? So now you have to make that tree become part of that ceremony. And so you have to count coup in order for it to become part of the ceremony in a good way, in a friendly way. And so they usually trying to do everything in a pure, purest way as they could with the pipe, and they go after it and they walk it back, and then they put it in the center. Uh, if you ever go to sun dances, you notice there are some effigies or uh, symbols there. Uh, a man is there, a moon, a star, a buffalo. That represents, these are, are the ones that we have and we need uh, to pray with them, make that connection with them so that we have plenty of food or plenty of things that uh, we need for our survival. An eagle feather, I think today they use an eagle feather as well, you know, in uh, a cherry tree represents the um, the female nation, the cherry tree, and is usually placed there for future generations to come. A nation builders, the female, so that tree represents that as well. And also for the flying, the winged ones, they make their nest in the area. And for a fruitful season, they use this, um, uh, cherry branches and tied in a fork of that tree. And then the people present their own things that they, they place at the center or within that tree. Today we have tobacco ties and flags that are uh, flesh offering because Mm -hmm. 
And so these are the things we're given to honor that tree, that cottonwood tree. It's now there in a good way. And also because the cottonwood tree represents and have a lot of things there. For instance, they always say, if you cut a branch off, there's a star there. Uh, and so it's all also represents the universe. And, and the branches you could use to ward off the negative spirits, Iya and Anugite, and all those negative spirits. They're afraid of that, the sound of the leaves of that cottonwood tree. And also, sometimes, if the tree is not brought in properly, lightning would strike that. You know, so every individual have to have a focus on that when they brought that um, tree back. That's why they have uh, ambassadors or delegates that are appointed to go get that tree because of how they live and the preparation that they did for one year. And so usually those who pledge are the ones that go after, after the tree. And they held it high so none of the branches would touch the ground and, and they would bring it back and put it in the center because it does have symbolic. It attracts water. And I guess that's the only tree that the roots could go deep and connect to another tree that is suffering or dying, you know, to help that other tree. But one thing that is, I've been told is that tree, cottonwood tree and ash, they don't get along together. They're always some, for some reason, uh, I've never been told, or maybe I have been told, but I'm, I never thought about it. Because <coughs> if a grove of um, ash and a, all of a sudden a cottonwood tree grows among them, those uh, ash tree will move to a different place, or vice versa, you know. Just like at home at Wambali, we have a lot of cottonwood tree on one area below. And now today they have a lot of ash tree, ash there, and on this side, west side, where used to be a nipi and water, that's where the cottonwood tree are growing now. And so, for some reason, they too cannot get along, just like we, because every creation have a spirit. It's either good or bad. And so those are the stories that I've been told, you know, so uh, I always thought why they never get along, you know. B but the, wherever they live, the, the one of the tree that is strongest, you know, that usually represents the male. At home in Pine Ridge, we usually have uh, ash, so that's represent the male. So if you're going to do any ceremony for a male, that's the tree that you will have. And that's the tree where you will place the umbilical cord of a young man, you know, on the east side of the uh, ash because that was the strongest. And for a female, it would be uh, cherry, cherry trees or bushes. And so we have those, you know, um, <coughs> where to do these things, you know. So if you have umbilical cord, you take it, male or female, you take it to the trees and ask them to give strength for female as for fruitful way of life for her, the continuation of a nation. And that's what I did with my grandchildren. Fortunately, some of the hospitals would do that. They give you the umbilical cord and then went back home and within four days I would go and bury it in a proper place with prayers, you know. Four feet, probably Chagalepi Topa. So I understand to me that will be four steps and place it towards the east of that tree.
are cherry bushes. And so that, that, that symbolic uh, way of, you know, creation and continuation of a nation and the creator of a nation would be the male. And so those two have to work together. And we have to use the whole creation to, to help us to achieve what plans or dream or vision we have for these young children. You know, we need help to do this thing. So we all, the all long time ago, they always have to deal with the, uh, the natural way of life, you know. And sometimes they pour spring water on those, but you know, uh, you have to make do with what, what's there, you know, especially using the, um, the uh, nature. I usually have the cedar, sage, and sweet grass. And mm. Yeah, honey, they usually use a buffalo hide and a deer hide for each and then do that. And dispose of the um, bodies or flesh or whatever it is in a proper way. You're going to have connection with the spiritual world as well, so that's why when they do that, when they go into the spirit world, the connection will be still there because of the physical thing that's still left in this world. And that's important with the connection. Sometimes they do come back to visit and we need to understand that, you know. So everything has to be done in a proper way with prayers and with uh, nature that would help us make that connection. Even in nature, things die, you know. Trees die, water die. All, everything that created is uh, a death, and I'm sure we as human, supposedly rational people, you know, we have to pray with them, giving thanks to them. And so such a gathering as we want Guachipi is uh, one of those uh, that we still make that connection and we will know in the future maybe just because somebody else is doing it, we're going to do it, you know, uh, and if we still don't understand, you know, it, it will be difficult, you know, once you sort of put vibration in your spirit and to do a sun dance or ceremony, that spirit is willing, but if you don't understand it, you know, you're, all you're doing is make waves uh, in your spiritual life, you know. And it's important to learn. That's why we have, what is it, seven months or 13 months to deal with ourselves, come to ourselves, and then our spirituality will go from there, you know. You just can't say, oh, my friend is doing this, so I think I'll go and join him. And all of a sudden, first day dancing, you'll get tired and, you know, eh, you'll be miserable. Because you're not focused on, on the spiritual realm of that ceremony. And that's why you have seven, eight days purification to really understand it. If you really want to do this, uh, if not, then you have to have somebody in your place because you cannot just break that uh, the line of communication with the other spirit you got to have somebody replace that to make that connection for you you know and if you don't you know you the negative side will come and you'll worry what's going to happen to me well I Lightning will struck me. What's going to happen to my children? All oh, this worry, all of a sudden, you know, you're, 
it's not be healthy for that person. And sometimes, you know, a, like even today's world, commit thinking of committing suicide. But the thing is, we have ceremonies to deal with that, you know, as I said before. So none of these things ever happen. Uh, just old people, when they thought the elderly in the 90s, you know, all their friends would die and, you know, they're alone. They don't have nobody to talk about the good old days or their thought, you know, their thought pattern of old times, you know, because nobody's in that age category to talk with. And sometimes they get lonely and then finally, when someone they're moving, you know, they sneak off to one side and some success, but others were rescued. They really have to talk to that uh, older person. And so when they think their life is it, that's it, or it's over, and then they, they do that. And so that's why we usually keep our, our grandparents, you know, within that Tiyoshpaya. We keep the elderly with us. We never think about putting them into a, almost a halfway uh, care center. You know, so they live with their family until they go into the spirit world and we do pose of their bodies in a, in, a, in a good way so that we can have that si chung and the connection to, to from the spirit world to this person and then we will always feel that sometime when we're down somehow they knew it somehow they they um, make us feel better uh, bring, taking us back to the time when we were born and having fun, you know, good times. And sometimes they take us back to that, whether in a dream or in a thought pattern, you know. So that when we come back to all those years to today, we feel good about it. We feel, make ourselves feel good, you know. So those are the connections that we have through other ceremonies, just like we want what you. We're trying to bring the spirits of all into that center. We all have. Hey, that women did something, uh, commit suicide, but it's, uh, he had, she had a reason to do that, okay? And so they use that song in a ceremony or in a Sundance, where this young woman was in love and in preparation of marriage to this young warrior, and when they went into a battle, that warrior was killed. So this young woman feel bad, real bad, and then all of a sudden they camped close to a big high bluff that this lady was singing. And so the warriors look up and he was singing and walking backwards toward that bluff, you know, uh, to fall off from there. So they got some two fastest young warriors, so they took off. Just as they got close, she went off the cliff and died. And so they call that a suicide. It's used in a Sundance, that song. But it, it, it's to honor that person who, who pledge or commit herself to one person. That's marriage is usually committed um, to one person. And if that, and the thought, the plan and everything was meticulously planted. And so when that was gone, you know, she probably prayed to do this. Yeah. 
yeah, they kind of have to have to come up with all kinds of stories in order for. Well, there's usually all kinds of stories and rumors when something has happened, you know, uh, something that affects their spirituality and, and they have to come up with some kind of a uh, story or something negative, you know, to respond to that positive action that has happened, you know. So sometimes they come up with stories way after too, you know. Somebody always come up with a negative story to clash with the positive story, so it's there, everything. that uh, Because we're born with a good and a bad, and it depends on, depends on what, uh, which one we want to use for that. And there are some special attires that uh, the sun dances use. When you go to those sun dances, they each have their own um, designs are the own thing that they envision, you know. Uh, for those who are in ranks, higher ranks, they have their own way of, of uh, doing, you know, just like this one, the front page of the one I gave you. That's for uh, a higher person. I think this is a Tokala design that they use. <clears throat> also, when they pledge and something happens from that and you understand it and really happy or something happened that, you know, to a family in your, your, um, feel bad, bad about it, you know, then usually a way of doing is a piercing. Sacrifice yourself, and that's the only thing you have is your body. And uh, to pierce is your flesh, to your flesh, and blood, and that's one of the highest powerful things that uh, anybody could do for a reason, you know. And so in Sundance, you do that. You sometimes have to. Uh, Here's one or two, and then the successful thing that you was given to you, either health or whatever thing that you need within your focusing of that life, of that life or nature, and then either thanksgiving for a good health for your kioshpaye or your nation or if somebody's really sick, and then you do that to strengthen that spirit of that person, to, uh, towards health, okay, so that's what, and it's a sacrifice that they do. Uh, so women usually give flesh offering, uh, as well as men, you know. And so <clears throat> these are the things that uh, they do, you know. You already have sacrificed, you have fasted, you already uh, don't drink water for how many days you want to pledge to dance, you know. You already uh, sacrifice the food, things that is needed for your body. And yet you <coughs> sacrifice those. And, but, and yet sometimes you, you want to go beyond your power, your strength, and that's when they pierce, you know. And, and it works, you know, it helps those families or the people that are doing it for somebody else. But if you don't want to do it and let somebody else continue, you know, a, there's somehow you need to sort of reapply again you know, and continue, uh, because it's going to really um, bother you, or bother the person, you know, especially if it's in a spiritual pack, 
that you made with our Creator. Okay? And sometimes you will feel it. Even nature will you know, uh, stand back. And other things that uh, we're used to it. And, and a feeling of that is really such that, you know, sometimes they go back and redo or do the sun dance. So that's one part is very important. And also the tree, the cottonwood I was talking about, it has a lot of significant symbol in that, you know. Uh, because, <coughs> like I said, sometimes uh, the cottonwood tree would uh, get hit by lightning. And I know that for a fact. Well, one time we're, when we were young, we had, we usually used a elm or ash tree, ash for our basketball goo. But that day we were in a hurry because some of my friends from the town are coming over. And so two of us went and downstairs, there's a lot of, <laughs> downstairs, down to the creek, a lot of cottonwood trees. So we picked one up, we cut it down, brought it back, and put the ghoul in. And that evening, a uh, thunderstorm was coming. And uh, lightning took out our <laughs> basketball goo. Boy, that thing was bright lights and hey, tremendous thunder. You almost knocked our hearing. You almost become deaf. And so sometimes you probably need to do something, a prayer or something to the cottonwood tree nation and it, we just went and cut it, so uh, when lightning struck that goal. That, that night we had a ceremony. Of course, Grandpa is a medicine man, so we had a ceremony. And they tell us that, you know, we shouldn't be doing that because it gave them that chance to play basketball. That's why the winner destroy the, our recreation thing, the basketball ghoul and the tree, the basketball ghoul was pelted like, you know. So it's a powerful thing. And so things like that, you know, it, it we experience it and we wonder about it. So we never, after that, we never use cottonwood tree for anything, you know. And because of that, <coughs> and uh, that cottonwood tree is only one that one tree that have a fork, always a fork, high enough to you know to do this ceremonies with it. And once it brought back into the center, it's now alive. It's in the center, and it will be a mediator between us and above the star nation, uh, and in between, and the prayers will come back through that pole and back through Uchimaka and to us, you know, to make that connection. It's, it's a circle, you know, that goes around to help us and deal with our everyday situation, if that's what we're asking for. Uh, things that <coughs> would put us in a in a good way. So Sundance is one of the ceremonies that is uh, communal. The families come from all over to support the dancer or the dancing and singing, and especially with a pipe. You know, the pipe is included in that ceremony and they use it to sometimes end the ceremonies or you bring it out and share it with the people is, that is within that circle. And so today, if you really look at sun dances, each have their own way of doing it, you know, how they feel comfortable with it. Uh, some don't have shade, they just place their tree and, and then they dance around it. And some have tree, uh, shade, bodies for the comfort of other 
supporters that are there. And they have announcers, they have, you know, a place for the Sundance to uh, rest. And so it is, uh, it changes a lot, it changes. But remember, our ceremonies were outlawed in 1883 and until 1979. But the thing is, when you talk to an elderly way back, sometimes they don't know it. Or sometimes they just tell you to a certain point. And the reason is when they talk about it and they get thrown in prison. So they just go and tell you how far so you won't get into trouble by learning that. So they never come out with a full story of how they do it, you know. So if uh, Ron talks about how specific this ceremony is, detail by detail, all of a sudden he got thrown in. Next time that you ask him, he's not going to tell all that. Just skip around certain things. He's afraid that if he tell you, you know the whole truth, you'll land in the same place like he did. So, you know, sometimes it's really hard. You really have to drag a lot of this stuff out of an elderly. And sometimes they don't know it because of Western culture, you know, inceptions of our other spirituality. So that, that really is a, a deterrent in our, in our lives of Lakota people. But now we could go ahead and do Sundance without fear of that.